Welcome to a new series where we head south of the border down to Mexico City. We spend a few days taking in the beautiful scenery, learning history, and taking in the culture. I've always wanted to visit Mexico City, and when the opportunity came up, it was something I couldn't pass up. Welcome to Our Lady of Guadalupe Pilgrimage, Mexico City. You saw that right. We're heading out again, so let's get going. So now we're just heading to our gate. You will find out we are where we are going in just a second. We're in a very festive mood today. <laughs> Made it to the gate with Mama J. She, she's watching a watching episode three of the vlog. Um, so we're here at LAX, awaiting the board. We're actually three hours early because it is a holiday, it's a 4th of July holiday right now. So there is a lot of people traveling, but so we didn't know in terms of how crowded it was gonna be. So far, so good, there's barely anybody here. Um, more people of our flight are showing up. I'll explain more of that later, but uh, got myself a, uh, Cafe Con Leche from the uh, cafe next door. It doesn't compare to the ones in Spain, but it'll do. All right, per usual, taking in my steps while uh, we're waiting for the plane. Um, yeah, so this is part pilgrimage, part historical, uh, cultural exploration for me and Mama J. So it's going to be fun. It's just for three days here. So we're going to Mexico City um, to visit the Our Lady of Guadalupe, but also to explore um, some parts of Mexico City and surrounding areas. For example, the pyramids, So which is going to be fun. And uh, yeah, looking forward to taking you all with me. And of course, as usual, just getting in my steps before our flight. So that's fun. And um, yeah, here we go. Now to add a little bit more context into this trip, it is actually part of an annual pilgrimage of the Los Angeles Diocese led by Archbishop Jose Gomez. Now roughly about nine parishes usually participate. This year, the one that Mama Jay and I are part of is one of them. So about 300 pilgrims will be making their trek down to Mexico City to have a pilgrimage to Our Lady of Guadalupe. from Los Angeles to Mexico City is roughly about three hours. So there's really no time for any kind of meal except for, you know, some snacks and some beverages. Just landed in Mexico City. We all got hats. If you hadn't really guessed, I'm part of a tour group, so... We arrived to Mexico City roughly around 3 p.m. There's about 50 of us all together in our group, so it's quite a lot to organize. Rain! Oh! 
All right, we had the Camino Solo Life. Now we're in the tour group, group life for the next few days. And it's raining, I mean, rain. Now the location of our hotel isn't that far from the airport, but considering this is an afternoon, Thursday afternoon, well, traffic is something that, well, it's quite universal. Also, advance apologies for any mispronunciations I may have during this series. Alright, we're just off the bus now. I actually took a little baby, baby tiny nap. Yeah. Um, I'm so tired right now. But uh, we're here in a pedestrian street, I believe. So we're walking to our hotel for our stay here. So uh, this, this is one of those like, uh, high, like shop, shop type streets. Um, I'll put the name on the screen so that you guys can check it out. But, I find out later that the hotel is actually located at the Centro Historico, or the Historic Center of Mexico City. Right, made it to our hotel. It's a Hotel Ritz um, here in Mexico City. Uh, quick room tour. Beds, I'm staying over here by the window, which by the way... We have a nice little view of the street below. Floors, toilets, bathroom, open shower, curtain here, and a little closet. Mm. TV, mirror, little coffee machine. Cool. So this will be our uh, living area for our This is where we'll be living for the next five days. After settling in, we head down to the dining room where dinner is served. Now keep in mind, most hotel restaurants tend to have international flavors for their dishes, so I wasn't really expecting much here. done with dinner and uh, finding ourselves a little grocery store to get some water and some snacks uh, for our room also for tomorrow when we're out and about so there's supposed to be one around the corner here so the rain began to pick up as we headed back to our hotel hotel room uh it's pretty dark out right now and uh it is raining quite a bit um when we arrived and a little sprinkles here and there um had a group dinner with everybody who's on the tour here um but yeah it's my first experience doing a kind of you know travel tour uh kind of thing so i normally travel independent and do my own schedule so this is a whole new experience of me for me, and uh, you are experiencing it with me as well. So I'm gonna you know, get to bed, we're gonna get an early start tomorrow morning, and uh, see what the schedule will have for us tomorrow. So I will bid you all a good night.
Friday morning. Um, uh, first full day of going around um, with the group. So uh, just preparing all my stuff that I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna you know, bring my backpack, my day pack. Um, but yeah, just had our breakfast down here on the, in the hotel. It's a semi-continental breakfast, uh, some good chili quilets. Um, but yeah, it was delicious. So now we're just waiting and preparing and it looks like weather-wise that it's gonna be a tiny bit sunny, but you know, still preparing for a bit of rain. Um, I do know I think Hurricane Barrel is gonna be around the area at some point, so that's why I guess it's been raining here. But um, yeah, we're just gonna, you know, you'll prepare as much as possible and just enjoy the day. So let's go. As we start our day, we are given an earpiece called a whisper. This is for whoever is in the lead, our tour guide, Alex, to let us know of any information of the sites we're seeing, as well as keep in contact with everyone in the group. We are a rather large group. Our itinerary is pretty much set for this whole weekend, so pretty much all I had to do, or everyone else in this group, was just enjoy. We make our way down to the main plaza, or the Zocalo, or Plaza de la Constitución. So it's the cathedral right there. It's one of the two that we're, or one of the three that we're visiting. And uh, we're actually in the main square right now. Did you know this is the largest plaza in Latin America? We walk a bit through the plaza and make our way towards the Templo Mayor, passing some shops to come upon the remains of the main temple of the Mexica people, or commonly referred to nowadays as the Aztecs. To see some miniature models of what the land used to look like prior to modern civilization. We then head to the Metropolitan Cathedral of the Assumption of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven, or commonly known now as Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral. celebrate a mass with the Archbishop of Los Angeles, along with several parishioners of the other churches that have made the trek here. and it's a lovely cathedral. Um, I did find a clamshell um, on the sides, so that was pretty cool. A little reminder of the Camino. Uh, quick pit stop here to our hotel, and then we'll be heading over to the pyramids, the Tijo Tijuan, and um, have lunch there, I believe, from what, from what I understand, so, all right. Just the ice cream. We're gonna have to get some on our back. And back on the bus we go. We head out to Teotihuacan, which is roughly about 25 miles or 40 kilometers from Mexico City. With the flow of traffic, I would say it's roughly about an hour's bus ride. But before we head to the pyramids, we had to have some lunch. Now today's lunch was a buffet style, so I was more than happy to sample all the dishes. Teotihuacan is an ancient Mesoamerican city roughly dating back to about 600 CE. 
Teotihuan, here are the pyramids, and the Avenue of the Gods. Making our way to the Pyramid of the Moon first. It's a nice little walk after our lunch, so we're heading there right now. Luckily, we have some clouds. So it's not too hot right now, but I did slather on some sunscreen before we went off the bus. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're not able to walk up the steps of the pyramids. It is prohibited, I believe, according to Alex, our tour guide, since the pandemic. It's all right though. You can appreciate it from the bottom ground. Teotihuacan means birthplace of the gods. Quite fitting for a city that was once so full of grandeur. It was once considered one of the largest cities in the Americas. Oh, no, the Pyramid of the Moon. Yeah, Pyramid de la Luna. The Pyramid of the Moon was once used for religious or ritual practices. We have a little free time to roam the area, so uh, there's a spot right over here you can kind of climb up a little higher, and then we'll probably head towards the Pyramid of the Sun. It's amazing to imagine that this was once a thriving, multi-ethnic city, but now it's just ruins. Walking down the Avenue of the Gods, you will see many merchants selling their products. Look towards the walls and you'll see some murals still preserved to this day. A little fun fact about the Pyramid of the Sun. There used to be a temple at the top of the pyramid. Of course, it's no longer there, either destroyed on purpose through centuries or by natural forces. to a small little shop for a quick pit stop. Here we learn a little bit of the history of the mezcal and tequila plant, as well as about the abundance of the obsidian stone within the region. And yes, we did get to sample some flavors of mezcal and tequila. Apple and coffee flavors the best. Some souvenirs. Dinner at the hotel with some rice and pasta. Of course, I couldn't end the night with just that. I had to get myself some ice cream. further towards the plaza. So many people out tonight. Street vendors, people enjoying the night. It was interesting to see the buildings lit up in different colors. It was a good way to end the night.
on next week's episode, we head to the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe and take in an afternoon appreciating some art. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.